And we're back. The power of words talking about today, how words impact your life. Your own words can impact your own life and other people's lives. I have two experts here with you, as you can see on the screen, who are ready to share with you the power of words. So let's go ahead and meet them. Hi, Zan. Hello, Laura. Thanks for having me. I am Zanita Varnado Johns. Everyone calls me Zan. I'm a creative writer and I'm tuning in from Westminster, Colorado. It's a little chilly here. Uh, you can find me online at zanexpressions.com. Yay, great to have you here. Thanks. And hi, Tracy. Hey, Laura. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm Tracy Phillips. I am an executive leadership and performance coach. And I am actually uh, coming here uh, from uh, North Carolina today. Uh, I am um, online. You can find me at www.theinnatecoach.com. Beautiful. Well, it's so uh, amazing to have you here. And I'm Laura Rubenstein. For those of you who uh, have seen me before, welcome back to the show. And as you know, we have a great meaty topic. It's about the power of words and how the words can change lives and not only other people's lives, but your own life. So what advice do each of you have for our viewers on how do words actually impact people's lives? And Zan, I thought we'd start with you. Okay, thank you. Um, I like to say that every word we share makes a difference. Every word is an opportunity to show love, share kindness, and that includes the words that we say to ourselves, our own intake. I like to manage my intake with positive words and positive reading and um, share my gifts of writing, creative writing in a positive way. Every word matters. I love that. Um, and what advice would you give to people about what, where can they start with their words? I think they start by considering how their words would make the other person feel. Uh, if someone were to say the words that you're about to share to you, how would that make you feel? We might not always agree with each other, but we have to disagree respectfully. Um, I try to use words to lift people and to seek understanding if I don't understand where they're coming from. Wow. Imagine if everybody had that intention to, to and awareness and thought that words matter really powerful um, that they are words are powerful so Tracy I know you agree with this and tell us about the um, advice you have and how do words impact people yeah so for me I feel like it all begins with the word you know from this we give meaning to things and this becomes our perspective of reality really it creates what we see and believe and so one of my top talents just happens to be the ability to read and translate people's language. Uh, and so their strengths and potential comes through in their language, as well as those things that are blocking them from who they are and where they want to go. And so for me, I rely on words to do what I do. Hmm. So tell us about this talent you have about translating words and uh, how people can translate their words. What advice do you have? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny because this, this talent I've had apparently since birth, um, and it used to get me in a lot of trouble, as you can imagine, I could hear um, what I call incongruencies in people's language. And so being able to ask that question, well, something's not adding up. And then to be able to kind of, again, through questions, come to uh, an awareness of what that gap is, you know, bringing that forward and doing it obviously in a mindful way now, uh, you know, wanting to support people to find what those pieces are within them. You know, one of the greatest tips I love to say with language, because it does have a resonant point, you know, all, all words resonate at different values. And so, you know, one of the things that we all say a lot is uh, the expression, I have to, right? I, I have to make that phone call. I have to write that email. And if we shift that, and we can feel actually that resonant point, I have to, mm, doesn't feel so good, kind of restrictive. But if we were to shift that to the words, I get to, it suddenly puts us in a state of gratitude that shifts our entire, the whole vibration and the way in which we look at this, right? I get to make that phone call. I get to send that email. So that's just a little tip that i like to, to share with people. I love that shifting into gratitude by shifting the language. I mean, that is the power of words you just pointed to. And Zan, you pointed to how kindness makes a difference, treating people at, at an esteemed level. So 
what a uh, gift to just bring this back and say, you know what, why not? Why not bring that positivity into our lives? Hello, could anybody not use a little more positivity? Right. Can, can we all use a little bit more positivity? Sure, yeah, so that's what we're here talking about. And I wanna talk a little bit about who you are, um, who you, what you do for people in the world. Uh, now that I know your expertise around words, it's like, well, what lights you up? What impact are you making? Who do you do it with? And um, what do you do with them? So Zan, why don't you tell us what you do in the world? Okay, I'm, I'm transitioning now. I'm a retired human resources leader. And up until this spring, that's how I introduced myself for the last 13 years. Um, when the pandemic hit and the world slowed, it, slowed down, it got quiet, my inner voice got louder. And so by releasing my new book that we'll talk about later, uh, a book of poems, I am sharing a collection of positive thoughts that I've had for 45 years. Um, I want people to be able to own their own stories and to get a good feeling from whatever comes up for them when they read my poems and that they might reach out and rethink how they receive other people um, with empathy, with compassion, um, and just change the world. I'm hoping that we could change the world with our positive thinking. I love that. So tell us a little mm -hmm. bit more about um, how you got into, you transitioned here and your story and then your book. Okay. okay, this is interesting. So the pandemic hit in March, February. In April, I, I was fearful. We were all afraid of what's going on. And I usually pray before I write a significant poem. If I'm gonna pay tribute to someone or if I wanna write about something that's meaningful. So I prayed one night and woke up the next day with words to describe what we're living through right now. The title of the poem is Spiritual Reset. We created an audio video to go with the poem and posted it online. Now that was a big step for me because I tend to keep things close, but I'm growing, I'm stretching. So we posted the video online and it was well received. It was very positive. And one of the reviews that came back really moved me. What, not, not just one, but there was one in particular from a retired couple in California. And they said they hadn't been their usual selves, that the words in my poem and the movement of the video, the pictures were so positive that it lifted them. It wasn't political. They got what I was trying to share. They felt exactly what I wanted them to feel. And the rest of the input that I got from people who saw the video, it was viewed uh, about 2000 times, I think. The rest of the feedback said, you need to write more. You have a gift, you need to share. Well, I know this, I've been planning to share for a decade, but I got busy with family and I've had a good time. I've enjoyed being retired and quiet and still. But that inner voice got louder and louder. And so I dusted off my desk. I pulled out my poems, my 45 year collection of poems. And I wrote poetic forecast, reflections on life's promises, storms and triumphs. And that book will be released this fall and I'm beyond excited. Woohoo! Well, we're excited for you. So congratulations. You, this is uh, like the perfect timing for all of this. So, um, so that's what a great inspiring story and also a story about the power of words. So Tracy, I'd like to hear since the word is everything for you. Tell us about who do you work with? What do you do? What, what is the impact you're making? Absolutely. Well, I just want to say, Zand, I, I totally see how we ended up on the same show together. And what yes. <laughs> was exactly what I have seen since 2020 began is that we're in a reset. So it's, it means use the exact same language that just makes, it gives me chills, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm also working on a book and it's about coming home to ourselves and finding that reset within us, you know, kind of deconditioning from what the outside world has been telling us our whole lives and really getting connected with what we came to this world to be and do. So again, there's a lot of similarity there, but I tip, I, uh, work specifically with visionary entrepreneurs and corporate professionals. And so visionaries are their own unique breed. Uh, they, they have a, a different need for support as well as a different toolbox um, that, that they really require in order to do what they, what they do. And, and really, in, when visionaries don't succeed, we all lose because visionaries are the ones mm. that came to bring us to that next evolutionary step You know, when we're speaking collectively. And so helping these people, I mean, typical visionaries, Walt Disney, we all know, you know, Walt Disney was an amazing person, but he couldn't even balance a checkbook, as the, the stories say. If it weren't for his, his brother, Roy, all of his visions that Roy put into reality would have never come true. So, you know, these visionaries being able to be coupled with implementers and other team, you know, members that can help bring these things forward is so, so critical. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do and that ability to bring visionaries down out of the ether a little bit through their words. Words are very grounding. You know, when we put something in language, like I always say, definition is key. If we, if we have a cerebral concept of something, but we don't define it clearly, it's going to be very hard to work with it. So one of the things I have my clients do is, is to clearly define what I call the what, how, and where in their lives. What is their innate value? Uh, how is that authentic approach to delivering that value and where are those ideal environments that best support them? And so once they know this, once they've defined it, they know what to look for, they know what's in their, their lane, they know what's out of their lane. And it's a lot easier for them to get there and, and again, succeed so that we all succeed. Wow, I love that little roadmap that you give to, to them because then they can give it to those people who support them. And you're so right, the visionaries uh, are the ones who put language to the hopes and dreams of people <laughs> and th their hopes and dreams and brings that to other people too. Uh, so it's, do you have a story about how you helped a visionary? I do actually, um, I, I've helped a number of people in this way, but this particular story was a lot of fun because I find my corporate um, visionaries to be different than my entrepreneurial visionary clients. And this particular gentleman um, had been, you know, he's a, he was a VP, he was at a VP level of, of what he had been doing his whole career. And so he had made a great success of himself, but what I kept hearing in his language was a calling to a different arena. And so I kept trying to, you know, pull that, you know, kind of tease that out and give that more definition. And what we, we you know, what he discovered was he was actually getting a vision of what would happen in an entirely different field but he didn't feel he could go over there because that wasn't his practiced credentialed area. And I kept, you know, kind of getting him, starting him by just saying, well, do you know anybody over there? Could you just have coffee or, or lunch with them and just share your ideas? See, yeah, I could do that. So he did that. Well, it eventually led to uh, somebody looking to hire him. And he came back and said, oh, I can't do this. I'm not, you know, and I said, okay. If you were to do this on your own, how long do you think it would take you to get there? And he said, well, I probably have to get credentials in this and that probably five to 10 years. I said, what if we could do that in half the amount of time? Take that person up, just, just, just see what it's like to go into that other area. You know, you're not happy where you are. Just take that leap of faith. Well, he did. And he ended up in two and a half years from the first time we talked about this in that ideal position where he was really helping to make things happen. I mean, from a visionary standpoint, he was bringing the next level of things to this particular arena. So, you know, a lot of times we have those limiting beliefs of what we can and cannot do. And what we're really being called to do is that gift and that talent that, that we came to, to deliver. Talk about the power of words. You know, you mm -hmm. spoke two and a half years to him basically, and that happened. You know, you said five to 10 years and you said half of that, like, wow. Yeah, that yeah. always blows me away when that happens. <laughs> right. And that's the power of Zan. You were also talking about like, you know, when you're kind to someone, when you talk to somebody about how great they are, they live into that. You know, it's like we live into each other's expectations a lot of times. And it depends, especially depending on who that person is that's talking to you or talk, or who you're talking to and who you are to them. So this has been a robust conversation about the power of words. And here at Women Speakers Association, we have we help you bring your messages out. And so I was wondering from each of you, 
What has been the value already of Women Speakers Association into your life, into your business? Um, and Zan, would you like to share? Oh, we have her frozen. So I'm going to have you share first, Tracy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Women Speakers Association, I, I a little while back met a woman who was in the association and I just thought she she added so much value and she was a great she's a great she still is, you know, she's a great speaker, you know, wonderful connector. And so we got to talking about it and she shared, you know, who she was associated with and everything. And so I started to really think about that because I've been a speaker for a while, but I've always kind of done it alone. And I like the concept of collaboration, of support, you know, of, of being able to learn from one another. Um, I'm a lifetime learner. And so really this, this association has helped me to have all those things, right? To not feel like I'm doing this alone, to have the, re and the resources are tremendous. Um, but just to feel like I'm in with like-minded individuals, movers and shakers, I'm all about rock stars. Um, and, and it's been a wonderful, a wonderful experience. Well, it's so great to have you here and you're definitely exuding exactly what most of our members are, are collaborative minded, our rocks. We think of everyone as a rock star here. So if you heard that word and didn't say, oh, that's not for me, um, you know, like Zan said earlier, it's like your words matter, your kindness matters. So um, it's really uh, a warm place. And if you want to find out more information on how you can join us, go to joinwsa.com. And welcome back, Zan. We would love to hear from you what the value of Women Speakers Association has been to you to date. It's been invaluable. And remember, Laura, you said, whatever happens is perfect. <laughs> you lost me and I was, it's perfect. Uh, WSA has been very inspiring. Uh, not only have I taken advantage of the many resources and reached out to other women leaders and speakers, but I am participating um, in the WSA publishing. They are publishing my book of poems. I'm also writing a chapter for the next edition of Voices of the 21st Century. I am excited about that. Um, they've helped me to focus at my own speed, um, to get energized, to do my writing, to write more, to share more. It's been very positive. Thank you, WSA. Ah, you're so welcome. I am thrilled to have this conversation today with you and just know that the power of collaboration along with the power of words uh, makes us unstoppable together. Uh, the publishing, having power of words in a book is incredible. Uh, we're about to close. We have one or two more days left. If you do wanna be a part of our next Voices of the 21st Century, you can go to wsapublishing.com. It is a fabulous way to join in with a group of people who can then promote your works. So even if you have a book of your own, why not put a chapter in this book? And then you have 40 other people <laughs> promoting your work. <laughs> you know, it's just, um, it's a, it's a powerful way when we join forces together. So I um, am so glad you're both here. Thank you for your wisdom and inspiring us to be our best through words. And we hope to help you do that as well. And we have tons of resources. So we'll see you um, on our next show. Thank you again, Tracy and Zan. Bye for Thank now. You. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye.